You're watching Let the Quran Speak, and now we're answering your questions. The question we have, Dr. Shabir, is why is it that in Islam, if a woman initiates a divorce, she gets nothing? That's the question. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe the questioner is familiar with one instance, uh, a, a particular situation, a maybe. specific case in which the woman got nothing, and uh, and uh, maybe there are some other cases as well. I mean, apart from the one that the uh, there are cases like that, let's say, and uh, um, I I know that it can happen, uh, but but why does it happen, and why should it not happen? <laughs> so let me explain that. So, so it's not the norm. Then you're saying it's not the norm that a woman would get nothing. In in the case of a divorce. Yeah, so, so let me, let me, let me um, uh, look at the matter more broadly. So there are things which were done historically for, for reasons of, you know, the time and circumstance, the way things were done uh, around Muslims at the time, and, uh, and Muslims did much of the same. And then uh, there are, uh, you know, looking, there are broad principles which are there in the Quran that should be extracted and applied to our current times in a way uh, that ensures justice and fairness to, to everyone. So uh, the principles of justice and fairness is what the Quran has always been about. But how, how that justice was seen and, and done in a, in a historic time, uh, that has a lot to do with the circumstance and the broader uh, social constructs. Now, we know that a lot of rights that women have now were not granted, uh, let's say, 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the, the right to own property, in fact, is a very modern right. Uh, women may have, by, as an exception, been successful business persons, as in the case of Khadija, uh, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, mother of the believers. But by and large, uh, women depended on their male uh, relatives, uh, either on their father, brother, uh, son, and, and uncle even, and so on. Um, so when a woman got married, uh, if she brought anything into the marriage, this was uh, this is what we call a dowry, and that uh, you know sometimes was given into the man's control, her husband's control. Uh, her husband may give her a gift at the time of marriage. Um, but he may retain a lot of control over that gift as, as well. Uh, sometimes in history, and perhaps to this day uh, in some parts of the world, a, a bride price is given to the girl's family uh, you know, by the groom. Mm -hmm. So she, he's marrying the girl and he's paying the family a uh, bride price. Uh, so what is uh, instituted in, in the Quranic teaching is what is referred to as a mahr. Uh, and, uh, and this is uh, a dower that is given by the groom to the bride. And that becomes her property to keep or spend. Uh, plus, the, the uh, husband is required to maintain his, his wife. Uh, now, what happens in the case of a, of a divorce? In the case of a divorce, uh, the husband divorces his wife, then uh, it is understood that she keeps the dower. This, mm -hmm. in a way, is her kind of financial security, uh, with the husband no longer there to support her. At least she has the support of this dower, uh, which will help her to get back on her feet until she can manage more uh, and better on her own. Moreover, the Quran uh, tells men that they are to give a provision to their wives. Surah, the second chapter of the Quran says, uh, uh, the, the divorced women shall have uh, maintenance uh, uh, according to what is customary. It is a right that is due on the people who are aware of the duty to God, mm -hmm. which, which every Muslim wants to be. Uh, uh, so uh, this is prescribed that there has to be maintenance, but according to what is customary, just that what was customary at the time is not what is customary today. Mm -hmm. So we need to translate that into what is customary today and what is reasonably to be expected today. Mm -hmm. uh, the 65th chapter of the Quran, at, uh, the whole chapter is called chapter of Talaq, the surah of uh, divorce, 65th chapter. Um, and uh, in the uh, opening verses, it talks about the fact that the women are uh, not to be uh, driven out of their homes uh, after divorce, but they're to give in suitable lodging. Uh, it's similar to what the man has. So that means there is an equality here uh, that the woman is to be taken care of and given proper uh, maintenance and a place to live and, and so on. Again, according to what was customary mm -hmm. at, at the time. 
So uh, coming to the, the case where the woman initiates the divorce now. Yes. Uh, so this was seen to be different because, you know, she got that dower and uh, the, the law was set in place in order to ensure fairness on all sides. So let's say, hypothetically, a man gives a large dower to his bride and then uh, soon after that, she decides she wants a divorce. Uh, without there being any fault on, on the man's part. Uh, uh, she just wants to be out. So should she keep the dower in that case? So this is the real situation at hand. Uh, so the judges had to say, well, okay, if she wants out, that's fine, but would she give back the dower or at least a part of it? Let there be a reasonable settlement here. Uh, but uh, what has happened over time is that uh, men have used this to the detriment of women. So they would not give the divorce. Uh, the woman wants out for her own good, valid reasons uh, or whatever. She just can't stand the guy anymore. She wants to be out of the marriage. So uh, even though he could be a cruel monster himself, but what he's doing is hidden from the law and, uh, and he's holding her in, in, in marriage. And for her to get out of that marriage, he may demand of her to pay back all of the dower and even more on top of that. Hmm. To, to, get a, to get out of this marriage. So this is all cruelty upon cruelty. That is not really Islam, but it may pass uh, as, as, you know, as the judgment in a, in a case uh, because the judge can do nothing but to let the people part in, in peace and, and hope that good will come about uh, for the woman, at least uh, in, in the end, despite the horrible settlement uh, at the moment. Uh, so where, of course, uh, uh, there are Muslim authorities who can do better than, than what an ordinary judge can do. Uh, see, a judge, let's say, in Canada or United States of America, where uh, Islamic law is not in, in, in force, uh, can, can only rule according to traditional Islamic uh, norms, things that were set as historical precedents uh, hundreds of years ago. Uh, but a, in a modern context where Islamic law is being applied uh, as the law of the land, especially Especially with uh, reference to marriage and divorce, uh, the, the, the law can evolve uh, to ensure that justice is being maintained. Uh, and, and of course, uh, the husband will be reprimanded for treating his wife uh, cruelly, and uh, the woman should be given a fair settlement. Uh, but this is all still being e evolved because uh, traditionists uh, are, are, are saying, well, it's always been done that way, it has <laughs> to be maintained. Mm -hmm. uh, where in Canada, United States, and Australia, and elsewhere, where we're Muslim judges now are, are, are looking at cases and advising couples, they should update their thinking as well and, and should try to arrive at judgments which are fair uh, for both parties and, and especially for women and uh, judgments which are bil ma'roof according to custom, but according to present customs and expectations, what will be seen to be fair and just in, a, in the present time without sacrificing anything that is inherently Islamic, our, our original principles. Thank you for sharing that, Dr. You're Shibar. welcome. Assalamu alaikum. We have some exciting news to share with you. As you know, Let the Quran Speak has been on TV screens and social media for 22 years. We've been reaching people all around the world, spreading positivity and good, and helping people experience the beauty of Islam and the accomplishments of Muslims. We've been shooting in this very space for the past two decades. And now, with the help of Allah, we're about to get the keys to Muslim Media Hub. If you like what we're doing, you're going to love Muslim Media Hub even more. Because it's the next step up. Think new TV shows, podcasts, social media content, and film. It will have new talent, more youth, and a lot more space and resources to do what we love. Spread the message of Allah. Our Muslim Media Hub costs $2.4 million. And for that, we need to raise $300,000. Please give whatever you can. Every dollar counts. It's our collective responsibility to share the message of Islam with our fellow human beings. Please help establish Muslim Media Hub so we can do this. It's a sadaqah jariya, something that will continue to be of benefit to the Muslim community long after we are gone. Thank you, and may Allah bless you and your loved ones today and always. Assalamu alaikum.